I'm not going to lie, I really love football in this time of period. There are so many transfers going around and there's so many confirmed transfers already. And in terms of a championship, we don't really have a transfer centre for that. So here it is. I'm going to be your transfer centre now. This video is going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be me talking through the main talking points, the main transfers that have happened in the championship in the top of my head. The second part is going to be a handful of rumours that I've read and to see what you think of them. Obviously, I'm probably not going to go through every single rumour. So if I've missed any out, let me know in the comments down below and then I'll do a second transfer episode where I'll cover them. But as always, if you like what you see, you want to see more Championship content, you want to see another transfer talk video, please make sure you do give this video a like. It's massively appreciated. Share the channel to as many Championship football fans as you can. That will really make my day. And to subscribe if you haven't or if you're new around here. All of that will really be appreciated. With any further ado, let's talk through the main transfers that have happened so far. So, one of the first ones that I'm going to talk about is Kieran Dow. Now, he's joined Derby and he barely had a game at all. He went back to Everton ending his loan, but now Wigan have got Kieran Dow on a loan. Now, I think that's a more sensible deal because I think he'll get game time there. He is a player that does have quality. He did have glimpses of it when he was in Nolan in Nottingham Forest a couple of years back. I think he could be a really important player for Wigan. It will add a little bit of creativity, maybe a lot of energy and desire. I think he could be a really good fit for Wigan. I think he'll be exactly what they need to try and get a more attacking threat going forward and to score more goals. Andre Green ended his Preston loan as well. He's returned to Villa, but now it looks like Charlton have now got him on loan. I think he'll fit Charlton a lot more. I think he won't necessarily be in the first team. I think they've got a lot of good midfielder options, Charlton, but... I think he may be featured more. I think the problem with Preston was when you've got the likes of Paul Gallagher and Ben Pearson taking the place in the midfield, it's really hard to fit in into the squad. So maybe I think he'll get a few more minutes with Charlton. Middlesbrough have got a Man City double in Patrick Roberts and Lucas Lemecha. Now, Lucas Lemecha is the name that really stands out to me. I've seen glimpses of this guy play. He does have a lot of quality. And I have to say... Both, I think, are quite positive signings for Middlesbrough. And they were probably the first two signings out of the whole January transfer window. Middlesbrough got them very early on. I think both would be positive signings for Middlesbrough, actually. I don't think they'll necessarily start every game. I think Lemetch especially will be one that comes off the bench. But both will bring a huge impact to the squad for sure. I think that's two really good signings for Borough there. Brentford have completed the signing of Hanel Desilogu from Sparta Rotterdam in the Eredivisie. He actually already had his debut against Stoke City in the FA Cup. For me, he looked okay, actually. And I think maybe they might have been going for a striker in the fear that Ollie Watkins could be on his way out. Maybe not in January, but they're going to have to keep hold of him for as long as they can. Even if they get promoted to the Premier League, they're going to have to do all they can to try and keep him because they'll need his goal. Herbie Kane has joined from Hull on a loan from Liverpool. He's already made a start and an assist in this FA Cup game against Rotherham. I think a really good signing for Hull there. I think they've got a real player with quality. One of the outgoings, Badu Indai of Stoke, has, has gone to a loan for Trespon Sport in the Turkish Super League. Someone who just wasn't gaining enough game time and I think he's getting a little bit older as well and I think alone in the Turkish Super League just to get him some minutes I think may be the most sensible thing for him. And Barnsley have completed the signing of Marcel Ritzmeier from Wolfsburger AC. Obviously the previous club that Gerard Stribble was managing at. Obviously he's had a huge say on that signing. He obviously thinks that he'll be a good fit. He's a central midfielder and I think they've got quite a few midfielder options already but Maybe he may be a first team starter or maybe he'll be one off the bench. We're just going to have to wait and see how Gerard Struber plays him. Also, one of the more recent one, Rian Brewster, a name that's been flushed around a lot. A lot of championship clubs wanted him. Huddersfield wanted him, Swansea wanted him. And it looks like it's Swansea who've managed to get him. They've got Rian Brewster on the loan till the end of the season. I think that'll be a fantastic signing for Swansea. I think the problem was with Swansea, if the likes of Baston got injured, they had a really limited amount of strikers up front. And the thing is with Green Brewster, he's worked with Steve Cooper as well, with him being an under-18s coach for England previously. So he'll know Brewster very well. And I think that's why Brewster preferred to probably go to Swansea rather than Huddersfield. I think that'll be a fantastic signing for Swansea, I think. So in the top of my head, I think those are the big signings that have taken place. If I've missed any out, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll discuss them in the next video. 
I'm probably going to miss a lot of these out with it being my first transfer video. Obviously, if I do, I'll just mention it in the next video. Keep that in mind. So now we've gone to the rumoured part. Now, there are a few bizarre ones there, but some of them I think are realistic as well. So let's head into the rumours. So we start with Jack Clark. Obviously, he's going to be without a club at the moment. He joined on Leeds for the first half of the season on a loan. Obviously, Spurs have decided to buy him, but Jose Mourinho has specifically wanted him to have more minutes. And he didn't really get minutes with Leeds at all. He only made three appearances, two of them in the League Cup. So Jack Clark needs more game time. And where that would be, I'm not sure. But there are a few championship clubs that are interested. Millwall, Queen's Park Rangers and Derby look like the three clubs that are really keen to get him. If I could see him going to any of these clubs, I probably would say Millwall, I think. Reason being, I think it would be more attractive to Jack Clark in the moment with them being a high position in the table. And I think as fullbacks goes, I think he'd be more suited to Millwall's role. Although Queen's Park Rangers, I think, will be a good option as well. I'm not sure about Derby. Another player being thrown about is Luke Freeman. Obviously, he left Queen's Park Rangers to join Sheffield United for the Premier League. He's made 12 appearances, but has made zero goals and zero assists. So he's clearly not enjoying time in the Premier League. I mean, he is a talented midfielder with seven goals and six assists last season. But it looks like Leeds are the person interested. And Bielsa may actually look at him to play him on the wing. Because if you did not know about Luke Freeman, he can play in central midfielder, but he can also play on the wing as well. And with Jack Clark leaving, maybe Luke Freeman could be the player that can fill the void of Jack Clark if he needs him. A name thrown around everywhere is Scott McKenna, the Aberdeen centre-back. Now, it looks like Bristol City... Blackburn and Huddersfield are all keeping an eye on this centre-back. But it doesn't surprise me that this guy's gained a lot of interest because Aberdeen have had a quite strong season so far. Another name I'm going to throw around in the rumoured part is Corley Woodrow. Obviously, main striker in Barnsley. Leeds United have made an interest following the sale of Eddie Nketiah, who has to go back to Arsenal now. He has scored nine goals so far this season for Barnsley. The thing is, where would he fit if he were to be playing regular football? Because Banford up top, you know, I could see a similar situation happening happy with Nketiah, Woodrow won't be gaining any minutes and I think he needs minutes honestly because I've doubted him at the start of the season but I think he showed he can play in championship level, he can play it very very well but if he is going to join Leeds maybe he needs to play at a number 10 position or he also needs to change with two strikers up top. There's no doubt why he's developing interest, he's had a great season so far with Barnsley despite their league position. So one of the outgoings for Huddersfield is their goalkeeper Ryan Schofield for Livingston. That surprised me a little bit to be honest with you, I mean it doesn't surprise me if he's going to be their first goalkeeper goalkeeper but I'm not sure if he's even going to be their first choice goalkeeper for Livingston either but following that departure it looks like Huddersfield are going to go for Craig McGivlery I think that's how you say his name Portsmouth's number one goalkeeper Things with Kenny Jackie, I don't know if he's going to get rid of him though. He likes to really hold a lot of his players down. He was very reluctant to let Jamal Lowe go when he eventually left for Wigan and I don't think Portsmouth have got many backups so I don't know what they're going to, Huddersfield are going to do with their goalkeeping situation. It's clear that Craig McGillivray is their preferred option, but it looks like they probably might have to look elsewhere for me. Now, there was a rumour that Zanka Jorgensen would return to Huddersfield. Those rumours were completely drawn the line very, very quickly. That is no longer the case. Zanka would not be returning to Huddersfield. He played a load of games for Huddersfield and was one of Huddersfield's more important players when he was there in the Premier League. But it looks like he's not going to be returning. Now, one of the League One playmakers, Marcus Madison, unsurprisingly, is getting a load of interest. West Brom, Derby, Huddersfield, Sunderland are all interested in trying to sign this playmaker in the championship he's been a terrific player for Peterborough so far hence why Peterborough are really high at the table him and Mo Issa were the big contributors to Peterborough's attacking success so far this season he's a very attacking midfielder and I can see why most of the people are going to really want him for in terms of increase of depth and quality but there's none of those teams for me that looks like that he can just simply slot in and just play. So I'm not sure about those rumours and I think Darren Ferguson may keep him to Peterborough though because he's going to really want all of his players to step up if Peterborough were to try and get promoted to the championship. But there's no surprise to me why he's getting all this interest because he's such a talented player. One of the deals that looks like could be confirmed like any time after this video is released is Scott Sinclair to Preston North End. Now, this guy does get rumoured and linked practically every year. 
but it looks like this year is going to be the year that it looks like he's going to move back to the championship. Obviously, he had a bit of time with Swansea, had a little bit of enjoyment there. Moved to Celtic and decided to win a few titles there. And it looks like he'll be moving back to the championship. But Preston North Fen is his preferred destination, which is very interesting for me. And I do think he can actually be quite a regular in this team. I mean, for me, he might have to play the position of Chris McGrath and probably play down the left. And then you'll keep, I don't know, Barkusen maybe as a central forward. And then you may have Billy Bodin on the right and Pearson behind. There's so many potential options that Sinclair can go with. And the thing is with Alex Neal, he likes versatile players. And I think Sinclair can play into that. Sammy Smodick's a guy that I've been a huge fan of since I've seen him in Colchester has not been getting enough minutes with Bristol City. Unsurprisingly, he's already been linked with a move away. Huddersfield have been the favourites to sign him so far. Another player that has not been getting enough minutes is Matty Vidra. Now, I left a comment on Ben HD's recent transfer video about Matty Vidra and my views. Now, he's been getting very little minutes at Burnley, only appearing off the bench a couple of occasions. And this is the Championship top goal scorer a couple of years ago with Derby. So, it doesn't surprise me he's already been linked with a move back to the Championship. Millwall looks like they're the favourites to sign him, which doesn't surprise me. Of course, it's Gary Rarick who's in charge, so he's worked with Vidra before. He's worked with Vidra at his best, so I can really see this deal happening. Even Cavallero looks like he has signed a new professional contract to Fulham, so meaning he's got a permanent move to Fulham, which I think is very, very good of Fulham to do. They've tied him down till 2024. So I think this would be really, really key if Fulham don't get promoted, at least what it looks like, it looks like Mitrovic and Cavalera would both be on a contract. They haven't dealt with Knockhart yet, so we'll see if they can get him a contract. But if they don't get promoted, they could still have two of their really attacking players for next season. And it looks like to me that they need a little bit of time to adapt to Scott Parker, but I think this is a really underrated bit of business for Fulham. I think they did really, really well there. And then we'll end on Jude Bellingham. Now, unsurprisingly, 16 years old and 38 days, the youngest ever player to step out in the championship. Just unbelievable player, honestly. He's younger than me, and I could only wish I was playing football at the standard he is. He's attracted the interest from the really big clubs such as Liverpool, Dortmund, Manchester United, Bayern Munich, Barcelona and Arsenal. They've all been looking at this kid, which doesn't really surprise me at all. It looks like Birmingham have really tied him down now. They're really going to try and keep him to the end of June where they'll get him to sign a contract. But it doesn't surprise me he's gained all this interest to already get the interest from the top dogs in terms of the big clubs at his age. He's got a huge future ahead of him. There's two more signings I want to talk about. Let's talk about Darren Randolph quickly. Looks like he's going to go back to West Ham with a fee of £4 million. It's a £2 million loss for Middlesbrough though because they bought him for £6 million and they're going to sell him to £4 million little bit poor on their part. And finally, Ben White. Now, he's been getting a lot of interest from the big clubs. Liverpool, Chelsea have all been very keen. And with Chelsea, they want a centre-back. And Ben White has been one of the options that Frank Lampard's looking towards. I can understand the appeal for him, but I don't know whether he's Premier League standard. I'm not really sure about his passing. But he is a really good player. One of the best defenders in the whole championship. I just don't know if he's ready to make that step up into a really big Premier League club. You know, it's going to take him a little bit of time. You know, a little bit like um, James Madison when he joined in the Premier League. He needed a lot of time to recover and a lot of trust from the manager to finally play out his ways. And now it looks like he's having his best ever season so far at Leicester. So these moves will take time. It'll be a risk, but maybe it might be a risk worth taking if we can't get the likes of Nathan Ake. So that is the episode of the transfer center for the championship have i missed anyone out is there anyone you want me to mention in the next video are there any clubs you want me to mention in the next video let me know in the comments down below and i'll tell you what they need to strengthen as always if you like what you see please make sure you do give this video a like it's massively appreciated subscribe if you haven't done or if you're new around here all of that will be fantastically appreciated but thank you guys so much for watching you guys are legendary if you saw the end of this video and as always take care